Hi, I'm Pastor Jack Davis from Tabernacle United Methodist Church. Due to winter storm grace, and we're not able to hold our worship services or Sunday school today, but I did want us to ponder some points to think about in this new year. The lectionary gospel passage for today is Mark chapter 1, verses 9 to 11. Let me read this for us. At that time, Jesus came from Nazareth in Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. As Jesus was coming up out of the water, he saw heaven being torn open and the spirit descending on him like a dove. And a voice came from heaven. You are my son, whom I love. With you, I am well pleased. May God add his blessing to the reading and hearing of his word. New Year's are a time of new opportunity. We get excited when we celebrate the new year because we think maybe I'll, I'll have a fresh start at what I wanted to do last year but didn't get to or what I've always dreamed about. Jesus had to make a fresh start of his earthly ministry. In this gospel, he's been in Nazareth ever since he moved there with his parents years ago after he was born. But now he has a choice to make and he's made that choice on our behalf and in obedience to the will of the Father. Three things in this passage that I'd like us to ponder. First is a choice in time. A choice in time. Every choice you make is a choice in time that affects the rest of time, that affects the rest of your life. Jesus had to choose to fulfill the calling in his life, to pursue his Father's will. And he made that choice for himself and for us. Every choice you make determines the next direction you're going to take. And I pray that you will have the grace and wisdom of the Holy Spirit to make the choices you need to make and to go the direction that you need to go. Which leads to the second point, a conscious trip, a conscious trip. When Jesus made his choice to begin his earthly ministry, he had to travel from Nazareth to the Jordan River, down where it enters into the Dead Sea. In miles, that's only about a 70-mile journey. But how many of you know a journey isn't always measured in miles? Often it's measured by the effect it has on your life and the lives of those around you. This journey of Jesus was not just from Nazareth to the Jordan. It was from the cradle to the cross. It was a journey for our salvation. He knew once he started this journey that it would end in his crucifixion on the cross, his burial in a tomb, and his resurrection the third day. All for our salvation. There are journeys that we take that change the rest of our lives. I remember in 1974, my brother and I, who are identical twins, left home at the same time to go to college. Our family packed up the car with all we thought we could need for that first freshman year. And we drove to Oral Roberts University in Tulsa, Oklahoma first to drop me off. Then my parents left me and drove my brother to Wheaton College in Illinois. And then they left him. That journey affected my entire family. I learned only years later my mom cried the whole way home. Because not only was the car empty, the home was empty when they got there. Her boys were gone and a new life, a uh, phase of life had begun for them. I remember when they left me there, I thought, this will change my life forever. I won't leave this place the same way I came. But that's a good thing. God was maturing me in his calling upon my life. There are trips that we all must take that God has determined for us to fulfill the purpose for our lives. I think the greatest journey we all need to take is the 18-inch journey from our knees to the floor where we bow before the Lord, confess our sins, and accept Him as our Savior and our Lord. I pray this year, if you've not made that choice for Jesus Christ, that you will. And you'll know Him in your heart. And you'll know that everlasting joy and life that He alone can give you. Which is my third and final point, the consecration of the Trinity. At the baptism of Jesus, the entire Trinity of God was revealed in all four Gospels. The Father speaks from heaven and the Spirit descends upon Jesus as a dove. And the Father says, you are my son whom I love. With you I am well pleased. God 
all of who he is was involved in the work of salvation for you. Everything that Jesus did involved the Father and the Son. <clears throat> when you accept Jesus Christ into your life, that choice involves all of who God is in all of who you are. I pray that we're all willing to make that choice today and let the Holy Spirit and let the Father and let the Son come into our lives and fill us with his presence and with his power. Every choice we make is a choice for a new beginning. Every choice we make can be for the Lord, for his glory and for our good. Every day is a day that's good for a new beginning. By the next choice we make, I pray that God will give us all the wisdom and grace to make those choices for him that will glorify him and bless us and those around us in this new year. Let us pray. Father, I do thank you for this day. I thank you for this day of new beginnings. I thank you for the hopes and dreams that you may come alive in us that are there by your own inspiration. I pray you give us the courage to make the choices we need to make and that you would give us the peace to know that we rest in your will. Oh, Lord, provide for us all that we need this year so we can serve you faithfully in all that we do. To your glory, to our good, in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And now may the grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all.